Support for today's show comes from Fallout 76. Bethesda Game Studios, the award-winning creators of Skyrim and Fallout 4, welcome you to Fallout 76, the online prequel where every surviving human is a real person. Uh, Work together, or not, to survive. (laughs) Fallout 76 will be available worldwide on Wednesday, November 14th. Pre-order now at participating retailers and play the beta. Games play best on Xbox One. Well, guys, it's uh, it's that time of year Ooh, where um, spooky time. Yeah, you start thinking about ghosts and skeletons. You start dressing up like Mark Marin, and uh, everything. What are you guys going us for Halloween? Nothing. Uh, I want glow era Mark Marin. Although I might do Marin era Mark Marin. I'm not doing '90s Mark Marin. It's a bad. Guy. Thank God. <laughs> what about you, Bones? You going as Bones? I'm going as myself. <laughs> <laughs> Spooky. I uh, I really want to be Spider Man, but I know that me in a Spider Man costume would be the worst version of myself. So I'll never do it. But <laughs> it's a dream I have. Maybe at the end of the diet, but you can be Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe in after season eight of the diet, but. I can be Peter yeah, this, Parker. You'll look like the, your, the spider suit after you get all the spider suits. That one, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that one. Uh, in previous years, we've been surprised by it. In uh, more recent years, we've come to dread it and question why it's happening. But now I think we've all found acceptance with uh, the utter spookiness of the beginning of our Halloween episode. Bonesy, this is where you typically... Scares real good. On the night of the third Halloween recording, the podcast hosts were all discording. Andrew was brewing the epic drop, so let's hear it now. Take it from the top. In the it's show, just, uh, sick drop, voice. Andrew. That was sick. It's the voice. We uh, we get to hear that voice once per year. Little note: yep. we we recorded our intro twice this week. We forgot it's Halloween. <laughs> well, I in, have a. In our defense, we never know what day it's gonna be when the show comes out, or what holidays like nearby, because we record four days, five days in advance sometimes. Also, it's just yeah. a natural response from Birds. Just tell us about his travel. So yeah. we kind of just I went into get that and then realized, system. oh, wait, 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 tell what us what happened. Spooky. Yeah. yeah. I got a, a weird, loose, uh, non-story about where I've spent the last three days. Uh, if you're interested, listen to the entire <laughs> episode. The Andrew end. will put it in there somewhere. I don't know. It could be uh, random no. in the middle. <laughs> yeah, just, just uh, literally in the middle of a, se- a special K sentence, just completely interrupting him. Uh, no, we won't cut. do that. Hey, we're Bones, Swain, and Birds. Yeah. We're yes, all we are. spooks, but we all got stuff to do, like play Destiny or not. Technically true. Uh, this is Crucible Radio, of course, the show for all things Destiny PvP, but uh, hey, there's a lot of layers to that onion. Uh, what have y'all been up to in the Destiny world? Swain's been doing the most scariest thing of all, which is taking a break. Mm. What? But I've been playing a lot. Well, I had a lot of free time. My girlfriend was out of town and I didn't really have anything else to do. And I really wanted an exotic on my Titan. So I put in a lot of time on my Titan. Uh, Really, really fun. I I played a little Hunter too. I, you know, I didn't touch my other characters for Mm. a long time because the power level grind was such a thing. And now no. finally it's like, great. I got some subclasses unlocked and I always liked playing all three, but, um, man, notice how bones didn't mention whether or not he got an exotic. I did not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's about the journey. <laughs> yeah. It's about the, it, it's guys. We wanted the hobby back, right? We wanted this. We wanted this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like, uh, when my, my hobbies really, uh, Really string me along. Yeah, I like when my hobby was something I could do uh, habitually, and now it's something I feel uh, drawn to 
inexplicably, even though I'm upset about things. I feel like we do we skip birds because he's just been traveling. Yeah. Well, no, I've, I've been playing a little bit. Um, I mean, I talked about it a little bit last week. Um, I've definitely have felt like overwhelmed by the amount of things to do in Forsaken and like the the homework load of we things wanted to keep up this. On. We wanted the content. <laughs> Uh, I have dived headfirst into the comp playlist, and honestly, I don't know what everyone's talking about. The comp playlist is great. I'm like crushing every lobby, solo (laughs) queue, no problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know what everyone has been complaining about this whole time. It seems fine so far. Ah, yes. The the shininess of the beginning of the comp grind. (laughs) What's your uh, glory rank? Uh, it's like 500 something. Oh, okay. Um, All right. I just got to, yeah, keep doing, do the same thing five more times, four more times. And yeah. uh, I'm there. Luna's hell. Here yes, we go, baby. He's that, you, we're joking because obviously it'll get worse, but that's like a helpful thing when you think about like the immensity of the, the full grind to legend. It's just like, okay, like if you go up 100 to 300 at night, just like, like, like do that a little bit more. You can just do that <laughs> just a few keep, times. Keep doing that. And then eventually you're there. It's scary if you try to think about like putting up 2,000 points. I'll tell you this. I definitely had comp playlist anxiety because it's like, you know, if I, if I win, that's great. But if I lose, then it's like I did nothing at all. It all gets canceled. And it's just like, nah. Like if you have not started the comp grind yet, that is, that is fine. Um, but just go on hop in there. Start the Lunas. Start getting those. And I really like the way they – they sort of set up the uh, the Luna's quest where you've just got a lot of things to do that don't require grinding your rank up at the very get go, and maybe you don't even want to do it because look, if you're trying to get you know precision hand cannon kills, uh, it's real nice when you're at that that lowest glory level and uh, getting real pleasant <laughs> lobbies to take those kills off of. Um, and I have to say, I, I just for for what it is in this incarnation that I'm at right now, um, I like it. I like the four v four. I'm so glad Control and Clash are in there, and um, I'm even I'm I'm finding I'm finding survival and to a lesser degree countdown to be bearable um, because of the the possibility of a Last Guardian standing turning into um, yeah, you know, anything other than just getting uh, getting a kill off and then getting stepped on by whoever's left. Um, yeah, I'm digging it, but, uh, yeah, I I was gone for a bit, so I'm getting back in, but, uh, definitely, uh, yeah, definitely cooling it a little bit, but I'm, I'm not taking a break in the same way to be sure. Uh, Swain, what's up, man? (laughs) Uh, I'm going to bring the the mood of this podcast crashing way down (laughs) because we're we're way up here and it's great and we're having a great time. It's Halloween, man. Let's get spooky with it. (laughs) Um, no, man, let's get dark. It's been... It's hard to say, but it's been a very rough week for me uh, this past week leading up to Tuesday, essentially. Um, a lot of work stuff that I could probably spend two hours and describing the details of and how much it sucked. Um, Swain but, worked on Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> it's finally out. Yeah, we're, we're, it, was a, it was a late push, and we're <laughs> glad we're getting it out on time. No, uh, <laughs> Uh, I work in a, a kitchen and this was especially tough week. We were very busy, but <laughs> this isn't kitchen radio. Um, I'm going to start off and say like, I personally am very prone to addictive tendencies and my addictive tendencies tend to make me the shittiest version of myself for lack of a better way of putting it. Those addictive you know, tendencies have never taken me in a direction that like, like drugs or alcohol or anything. Um, it's more so when I like things, um, like hobbies or, uh, learning or uh, sometimes like food. Um, I get really like into it and I'll eat all the time or I'll, uh, spend a lot of my time thinking about it or obsessing over it. And, this past week, I kind of got obsessed with chasing something in Destiny. Um, and what ended up happening is I didn't get it. And I spent a lot of time trying uh, to the point where 
I was like missing sleep and staying up till really, really late, uh, almost the entire night, the one night. And <laughs> it's simply put, it negatively affected my ability to do other things outside of gaming, obviously. Um, I need to be very sharp uh, to run a kitchen. And it's it, it really shows. It really shows lately the lack of sleep that I've been getting. Um, and I know personally for me, when I am getting enough sleep and I am committing to other things like exercising. I like, I love exercising and I love being able to spend time with my wife and not obsess over a little thing in a video game. Um, those are all things I need to be healthy and I need to be able to function as an actual human. I was like a zombie for this past week. Um, and Tuesday morning, um, I kind of spent the morning chasing that thing one last time. And it was just simply Gambit. I was trying to get the the last um, like uh, servitor to spawn to get my ship. And I had been burned a few times the night before of running into it and not killing it. And leading up to reset, I was just playing, playing, playing. I was just getting stomped. And then I ran into Modern Tryhard, who has been playing a ridiculous amount of Gambit this week. <laughs> Uh, for the Rockstar quest or whatever it is, the, the competition. Um, and I just got stomped for two two games straight. And I got angry, I got, like legitimately angry, like horse yelling in my basement angry. And I just kind of looked at myself and I was like, this is the worst version of myself. Like getting angry at something that is supposed to be fun for me. This is supposed to be like, Oh, I go downstairs, hang out in my basement because that's something I like doing. Not something that I feel like I'm like obliged to, to keep pushing and going after something. It's it's literally just scratching like it's scratch offs. It's a, like a very fancy scratch off. Uh, and I keep going back to it and it wasn't healthy. Um, and I noticed it. And then, I mean, we, we joke, this is something we asked for. And I'm not mad that we have so much content that I, I am constantly thinking about it. Um, I'm mad at myself for not being able to control myself with that and still be able to do all the other things. Um, from being very honest, I really loved last year's version of Destiny simply because I didn't have all these in-game responsibilities. It's like a second job. Mm -hmm. And it was the perfect amount with the amount I work. It was like, oh, I can enjoy one to two hours of Destiny at, at night. And I don't feel like I'm obliged to lose sleep to get a thing or to get a shot at a thing. Not even like a guaranteed like thing. Uh, virtual shiny item. Um, and like I said, it, this is the worst version of me, and I decided I'm going to take this week off. Um, I need to be able to come out the other side of this week with a better way of viewing my time spent in the game. Um, yes. Thankfully, it will coincide with some in-game changes that will hopefully help that. Um, but I oh mean, <laughs> addiction is no joke and it lies in more than just drugs and alcohol. Uh, it happens all over the place and it can falsely, well, it can negatively affect those around you in similar ways that drugs and alcohol can, um, simply by neglecting your responsibilities is one of the, the worst things you could do. So I'm taking the week off. One thing I've thought about is, um, you know, as I've gotten older, my relationship to every video game that's not Destiny has changed, which is kind of taken the shape, with some exceptions, but it's sort of taken the shape of like, oh, 
that looks cool, but like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm gonna get a new game, and then I'm gonna <laughs> gotta install it, and then I'm gonna like sit through 20 minutes of cutscenes and tutorial levels, and then I'm gonna run around, and it's the easy part, and it's like, yeah, uh, like get me to the part that's fun, right? I want to do the, I want to do the fun part. Get me, get me in it. I, let, let's 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 go, and um, I have to make this sort of decision of like, well, if I, you know, I want to play a game, if I wanted to play Destiny in two minutes, I could be in a match that is a perfect 12 minute bite size challenge. There's a little break at the end of it and you're now automatically queued into the next one. And it's a whole new chance to start over fresh to, um, to, you know, maybe get another drop depending on what you're doing. Um, or to just go, yeah, that was fun. That felt good. I want another one of those. And I don't think it's a, it's a bad thing, right? I think it's a huge achievement that Destiny has, especially on the PvP side and and now Gambit, has made these perfect little bite-sized chunks. And it, you can totally go in and just have one of them. You can play one match and have the full experience start, middle, and end. Um, and, you know, I really I really like that. But I've definitely found that same thing that, you know, I might sit down and go, all right, well, it's it's 11.15. I could get, you know, I get a couple games and I'll get the daily. I'll just go in, I'll get the daily. Maybe I'll play another. And it's like, well, that was fun. And then, you know, I'm already queuing into the next one. It's like, oh, okay, well, I caught this one. It's like, oh, you know, if I get this bounty, then I'll be able to go get another package. And I'm trying to chase the drop on this thing. And even though it is just little bite-sized chunk after bite-sized chunk, um, it's just very easy for me to string them together to the point where I realize like, oh, I'm going to be tired tomorrow now as a result of it. Oh, it um, happens for sure for me on Thursday nights. It's been happening to me for three years where we finish talking to like a great guest or someone like, or we just talk ourselves <laughs> into like how much we enjoy this game. And at the end of it, it's 1am and I'm like, crap, I'm, I want to play. And I'm kind of awake and I end up playing to like 3 a.m. And uh, my dogs wake me up at 6 a.m. every single day. So uh, I don't really have a choice to wake up at that time. And no matter what, I get that amount of sleep. And it's not healthy. It's not good for me. Um, and I don't like it. <laughs> Well, <laughs> this is a topic I talk extensively on my podcast, Gaming in Hell, uh, also found on Spotify and other places you listen to podcasts. Uh, but yeah, just being kind of obsessed with something. I feel like that word for me can describe where I'm at a lot lately versus addiction, uh, even though that's 100% what's going on. Uh, it's just, it's like easy to just like set my sights on something and want one object, especially when it's flashed in front of you in such a way that's, you know, designed to make you want it. Like a phone game that I played and my girlfriend played and we were both like, you know, phone games these days are not too in-depth when it comes to gameplay, but are very in-depth when it comes to uh, leveling stuff up and collecting them all. And you know, I wanted the five star version of this thing and it was like three months and of playing it to get there. And then when I got it, I was like, oh, all right, I guess I do another three months to then get a second one. And then I just get more of those. And I sort of like it kind of just like kind of snapped me out of it. And I was like, fuck, that wasn't even that cool. Um, so while the process was something I enjoyed, I had fun. You know, it was a good time time killer on my phone but the end result was just like whoa <laughs> i don't i don't know if that was as exciting as i was hoping it would be so it's just and that's that's absolutely what destiny does now and in all fairness so many other games are designed to be this way it's not destiny's fault exclusively but uh yeah i really want a fucking new exotic oh, and mean, there's been times where i'm like playing i'm like oh uh i've got 3 hours tonight to just chill Personal time, really great. I'm in a good mood. I could keep playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey or I could just grind some stuff on my Titan because I want to get one-eyed mask. And the odds of that are so insanely low at the moment. Yeah. And that just is like, oh, well, then I chose Destiny. That kind of, that's lame. 
for me, it's like I, I, I don't like necessarily play a ton, but it, like I, I enjoy it as like as a re- relaxer, a mindless mm-hmm. re- relaxer for me. Yeah. Um. After a long day, and I want, I want to be able to like just jump in and enjoy it like for that little period I do because like I don't have a ton of other time in my day and to like enjoy something to myself. Um, and you know, it sucks, but like maybe if I had a normal like 40 hour a week job, maybe I would be a little bit more comfortable right now with the amount I play. But yeah, that's, you know, what's interesting is that's not the, that's not the thing for a lot of people. Like it's not just me and it's not just my industry. Like there's a lot of places that people work way more hours than that. And then they come home and they want, or, or they have kids, like someone who has kids, the time that they get the game is like, is precious. It's, It's very, like very little. If I'm being fully honest with myself and with you guys, I think the level of how much I enjoy Forsaken is higher now than it was uh, a month ago or a month and a half ago in terms of all these like big changes to the game. Like I think when that weapon slot change hit and we all like were hopping on to test it out and playing quick play and we all got our shotguns on, I was kind of like not feeling it. I was like, this is, this is the same mess we had in, in D one. Like, People are going to have the same complaints. I'm, and look where we are with shotgun. Uh, it, it's an eight meta kind of thing, but it is. But um, now, now that those grinds are done, now that I'm just getting stuff and I'm like feeling out what I like, I'm having so much more fun, like customizing builds around fighting lion and not like getting on it Tuesday and thinking, well, I guess I got to spend two hours in the dreaming city. <laughs> like that's not that cool for me. It was great the first two weeks and now I'm bored of it. So it is nice to know that like, okay, got a lot of bulk playing out of the way and maybe I can just really focus in birds and do what you do, which is like really zero in on the parts of the game that makes you feel good and not get solely consumed by the other 80% that says, please do this, please do this, please do this. Because that's crazy. It's, it's finding the okay in that. Like, yeah, I will probably never have all of the things. I, I do not have the time for it. Uh, <laughs> Ain't nobody maybe, got time for that. Maybe just carve out a section of the game I want to be really enjoying and pick that and dedicate my little time to. Well, and, just and, and also if the part you choose gets aggravating and starts to feel like, like it's becoming a task or something like that, then you know, pick another area. Like I've, yeah. I've done that where I've, I've got the toil and trouble nightfall gun because uh, Dan and Cable and I were like really enjoying <laughs> setting some high score nightfalls, which yeah. is not something I do every day. So it was, it was really helpful to just go, Hey, cool. I got this other focus <laughs> where, where this other aspect of the game is kind of annoying me or, or getting tired, tiresome right now. I think part of it for me feeling comfortable this week taken off was just like, I hit 600 and it's like, okay, that's that was what I was kind of chasing. Like, keep upgrading, reach that level. Like, the seeing those powerful engrams being in the like directory and being like, well, there's another chance to get a little bit closer. And here's another little chance at an exotic. And I've gotten a couple new exotics, and I feel I feel okay with what I have, and I don't. F- I feel a little bit more comfortable than I did like maybe two weeks ago where I was like, man, I don't have any of them. Like, <laughs> like what, what, what the hell? Like I would love to just have something new to play with. And that's a, that's like a, that's a carrot onto itself. It's just exotic. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'll feel much better next week when I return and I'm definitely not going to be logging as many hours uh, for a little bit. Might save some time for some Spider Man. Oh yes, yeah. Spidey, so good. <laughs> Look, here's the thing: like we are, we're talking about our own experiences. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how many hours of Destiny you're you're playing. You might have an hour a week to spend on it. You might have 
a lot more time than that. That doesn't mean that, you know, we're not calling you addicted or anything like that. It's something you got to figure out for yourself. I would yeah. just say, um, I mean, he, he, here's the deal. The, the first thing is that it's a game. We chose to play it because it's fun and we like it. And if you ever find yourself not having fun um, or you feel obligated to do something that you're not enjoying and you'd rather be doing something else, um, you know, you, you always have the option to uh, to take a, a step back um, and just sort of, you know, just say, look, is this is this what I want to be doing right now? Forsaken's not going anywhere. We're lucky that a lot of sort of the initial races, you know, the race to 600, the, the race to the raid, a lot of these things are out of the way now. Um, and it's okay to stretch out and take your time um, enjoying this because, you know, it's going to be a minute until we get that that next release. Um, the other thing I would say, and I say this as uh, a, someone with a psych degree and also someone with an addictive personality, um, one of the best metrics for addiction, I mean, Swain, you said it well, is, is are you experiencing negative consequences from it? Um, you know, certainly my wife is understanding that like, look, when a new expansion comes out, you're probably going to disappear for a bit. That's okay. Uh, you know, she, she's got her own stuff that she cares about. Um, but yeah, I've definitely felt the same kind of thing of like, you know, this is supposed to be a hobby. There's supposed to be enough to do to keep on doing it. But um, I have other hobbies, right? I have <laughs> other stuff I want to do. I've got, you know, like you say, I've got other obligations and responsibilities. Um, and I want to make sure that there's nothing in my life that that is so consuming that it shakes those. So, um, you know, if you're having a blast and this doesn't apply to you, then it doesn't apply to you. If you're um, feeling like, yeah, you know, yeah, I never, maybe burnt. I never thought of it. Yeah, but you feel burnt out. That is normal. And you are, um, you're allowed to take a break or even just zoom out a little bit. You know, we love you. <laughs> at Crucible Radio, it is a scientifically proven fact. Uh, that we love. We you. love you guys. <laughs> so uh, take care of yourself. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. This upcoming interview is like the perfect little uh way to optimize your time I, b- I believe so uh stay tuned after this uh ad from this week's sponsor guys we're gonna we're gonna have to um <laughs> we're gonna it's more important now than ever to figure out how to optimize our time because there's a lot of games going on <laughs> right now there's a lot of stuff with bones you told me that i have to play spider-man it you is going obliged. to I, I can't just this say isn't like, like a, you know what, i don't cool, really like adventure fun. games i don't really that's that's fine, not, not for me. me look i understand why some people like it i personally don't i'm okay with that no none of that that's actually not applicable you're playing spidey all right, I'm working. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out how to, uh, how to check these boxes and develop that skill. And you're gonna need to do it too because our sponsor this week is Fallout 76. Yeah, uh, you take know, that break. Uh, play some Fallout 76. <laughs> a little game studio called Bethesda. Maybe you've heard of it. They've made a, a bajillion Fallouts. Uh, Fallout 4. Uh, a little game you might have heard of called Skyrim. If you want to explore an impossibly large world and uh, have fun along the way, you you know what Bethesda does. And this week we had to tell you about Fallout 76. It is the online prequel to the Fallout world where every surviving human is a real person, which like, that's a, that, that, that's a trip, right? Like I'm used <laughs> to playing the Fallout games of like, Oh uh, yeah, a bunch of bunch of zombies over there, and no uh, NPCs a, in this one. Yeah, so everybody's no, a uh, real person. They've got uh, aspirations. They've got <laughs> hopes, jobs, dreams, hopes, materials dreams. they've collected that I assume pets. you can take from them if you want. Hey, look, you can work together uh, or, not. or not to survive. Maybe you want to uh, you want to be the terror of Fallout seventy six. That's fine, baby. Go for it. It's under the threat of nuclear annihilation. So you go ahead and experience the largest, most dynamic world ever created in the legendary Fallout universe. Reclamation Day 2102, 25 years after the bombs fall, you and your fellow vault dwellers, chosen from the nation's best and brightest, 
emerge in the post-nuclear America. I don't want to think about the specifics of this too much, (laughs) but you go out there, you leave the vault, and you see what's out there. You can play solo, or you can join up with your fire team as you explore, quest, build, and triumph against the Wasteland's greatest threats. Guess what? November 14th, it's a Wednesday. Fallout 76 is going to be available around this whole world. You can pre-order now at participating re- retailers and play the beta. Uh, the games will play best on Xbox One. Go check it out. And I'm sure they call it a fire team in that one too. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what it's called. It's a, a lower F, lowercase F fire. Fallout team. <laughs> a fallout team. Okay, yeah, moving on. Guys, we've got a great guest. We're going to talk some perks, talk some loadout options, the secrets, the stuff you're not using and you need to try. This guy is like the epitome of work smarter, not harder. He is yes. He is wringing every bit of expertise out of this game, and he's doing it yeah, way pick, faster than pick I can choose <laughs> with my lazy, dumb brain. Uh, he the. the we recorded this one in advance. There, there's some insane stuff in here. You, you're going to love this interview. Stay tuned. Spooky but music, maybe. Muse, spooky musical break. Spookical break. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. And uh, hey, good choice on you, because we've got a very special guest this week. Uh, We heard him uh, not too long before Forsaken dropped. Um, Late in the meta, he was still finding new things to give him that edge in the crucible that uh, others had overlooked, because he reads the perks. There's no one else like him. You might know him from YouTube. You might know him from his fine posts in Crucible Playbook. Or from getting killed by him in the Crucible. Yeah, or if you are on the East Coast and you play on PC, probably he shot you with a hand cannon three times. Uh, it happens very quickly. I don't understand. Special K, dude, welcome to the show. What's up, guys? Hey, welcome, welcome back. back. I, l- I love that intro. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get longer and longer each time. Next time you're on, it's going to be uh, just a solid monologue. <laughs> Uh, so how have you been enjoying Forsaken? Honestly, it's it's been awesome so far. A lot of changes happened, but I think the amount of content that Bungie brought in was just perfect. Like it, it was a good way of saying, "Sorry guys, we messed up for like for for the first year," and like <laughs> they just give everything to us with Gambit, all the PvP changes, all the PVE changes. It was just amazing, you know. Well, at the end of our last talk, you sort of had a, a wish list of some of the stuff that you were hoping to see come with Gambit. Or- with some of the stuff you were hoping to see come in Forsaken, did you get everything on, on your wish list? Um, Kid on Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I think like the, the biggest thing was more content. Uh, I, I'm glad that there's random rolls back. Um, yeah, I, I think those are the two biggest things that came back that did it for me. PvP is in a great spot right now. Um, although I do want to see a few different changes that could be implemented. Maybe we could talk about that later, but... I think overall, like a lot of good things came into this update. So I want to start off with a question. Um, kind of, you know, putting aside some of the the more obvious changes from Forsaken, right? You know, we've got new guns with random rolls. We've got, uh, you know, new Gambit playlists. You put all that aside. Um, just sort of looking at what sort of what thinking goes into your loadout in Forsaken. Um, you know, at the end of... Uh, year one, you know, we're we're still running double primaries, and now we've got the ability to sort of load in special weapons wherever we want. Sort of looking at that, do you think there's still a place for double primary loadouts? Uh, if you're if you're you know you, you're trying to show up and bring it in a in a competitive setting, yeah, that's actually a good question, and this actually depends on the map that I'm playing on. Um, so if I'm playing a long like a long range map, like. I can probably run double primaries. I'll probably put like a scout rifle or pulse rifle on it and maybe run it with a hand cannon. But if it's something a bit smaller, 
like I'll use Javelin as an example. I'll probably run it with a pulse rifle and maybe a shotgun or an SMG, depending on which class I'm playing, you know. But like the, the weapon loadout that I'm going to pick really depends on the map, you know. Like you, you will not mm. see me running double primaries most likely on Javelin, right? Because it's so small. Or even Endless Veil, vale, you know. Like Endless Veil, vale, I'll probably mm. run it like, a, like an SMG and a hand cannon. Maybe throw a shotgun in there or something. Well, I'm curious about SMGs in particular because, I mean, they were very popular in year one. We all had our favorite from, you know, the three. <laughs> I happen to like the Resonance 42, which you got me hooked yeah. on. Um, coming into Forsaken, we're certainly seeing a lot fewer SMGs. Where, where do you think they're sort of at in terms of viability and what makes for a, a, an acceptable SMG in Forsaken? So honestly, that's a good question. Um, I think SMGs could could get a bit better. Um, but it's all in the way that you use it, right? Uh, you can't stick around a corner and just wait for a guy to come. You have to know when to backpedal. And especially in this shotgun aping meta, like you got to know when to backpedal, right? Or keep a bit of a distance. Um, but like, I'm really glad you asked this question. The reason is because I've been running SMGs mostly with my Dawnblade. I find it's really successful with that class. And it's because of that top tree and how you're able to actually float in the air while you're shooting with your SMG. Uh, I don't know if you've, you guys ever tried that before. Yeah. No, it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah. See, see like, I, I honestly, like Dawnblade has always been my go-to class since year one. And it's actually surprising to me that there's nobody in the Crucible using that top tree. Like, I have never seen a, a single Guardian use Icarus, like Icarus Dash on me, you know? And it's, it's too bad because it's honestly such an amazing class. So in that uh, perk tree, there's a perk where basically... If you're jumping and then you're you're shooting your your gun at the same time, you're just gonna float in the air, like drift away or whatever, and you can keep on shooting your gun while you're floating, right? So this is an amazing tactic to use with your SMG. Uh, so if this is a guy like with a shotgun rushing you, start pulling the trigger, jump, and keep holding the trigger, and you're just gonna float away while your your opponent's just like you know running around, <laughs> scurrying around on <laughs> the ground, you know. <laughs> so that's it's really cool, honestly. Uh, one thing I noticed you you use quite a bit in that top tree, and you mentioned it, is the Icarus Dash, mm -hmm. which I don't ever really think took off in Destiny yeah. or took off in D2. Um, I noticed there's a lot of times, you know, I sort of think of it as part of that, you know, way up floofing around in the air style, but you're using it inches off the ground. Yeah. So, sort of, how does that work? I mean, yeah. what is, um, when are you going to pull that say, one that's, out? Yeah, that's the frustrating one for me is like the, the slowness of it and how yeah. are you getting around that? Yeah. So I'm happy you asked that actually. Um, so I, I don't know if you guys there was a, saw there was like a video that this, uh, this YouTuber, I think his name is Ninja with no L. He, he made a video, I think it was about mm -hmm. a week or two ago and he was covering hunters. Right. Uh, and he did like a 20 minute video on how hunters are the best class just because of their movement, uh, how they can like uh, change directions in a whim or their jumps are so precise. Right. And right mm -hmm. at the beginning of the video, he was talking about uh, the hunter dodge where you can engage and then disengage so easily just because of that dodge available, you know? And and he was going on to say that I think hunters is the only class that can do that. But a lot of people don't know actually Dawnblade could do that as well. Um, most people think that Icarus Dash is something that you have to use while you're flying in the air. Um, but that's not the case, right? Uh, most of the time, like literally you just press jump and you press the Icarus dash button right away and you're actually going to hop in the directions that you want to go, right? The thing is, I use this trick on PC where, and I think you can do this, do this on console as well. Um, I actually press my Icarus, Icarus dash button first and then jump. So it's like I'll hop really? in the directions that I want to go. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, right? So I think uh, like three or four days ago, I uploaded a video on my channel. It was just, I, I was messing around and I was using Mida and I was using uh, the mini tool as well. And in that game, I showcased a lot of times like how to use the Icarus Dash. So if anybody's listening to this uh, podcast, just go check that video out. And I was using Icarus Dash so much. And there's a lot of comments actually in the comment section like, dude, how are you using the Icarus Dash like three inches from the ground, you know? And it's really, it's, it's so simple. Just press the air move button and then just jump in the direction you want to go. And uh, you can do this on console as well, I believe. Just I think on console, uh, you have to press crouch, crouch and then jump. Something like that. But it works as mm -hmm. well, you know? And so the, the best thing about it is you don't have that 20 second cooldown that hunter dodges have, right? Icarus dash is only mm. on six seconds. So it's freaking amazing. 
So you're using it basically as a shade step. Pretty much. Just uh, a yeah. couple inches off the ground instead of on the ground. And I can do it from the air. So And the air. <laughs> that was also nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I noticed, I mean, a lot of the what you're going to be encountering in the meta right now is going to be uh, pulse rifles, mm-hmm. which generally encourage people to sort of aim down scopes. So they're going to be spending a lot of time aiming down scopes as they're engaging with you, you know, mid-range or whatever. Um, and having that Icarus dash there is enough to, you know, maybe not escape, but certainly force them to reset their aim. And I, yeah, I was watching that video and I was kind of surprised at like how long it was taking people to sort of, you know, de-scope or stay scoped and sort of re- retrack you and sort of get, uh, get, get their crosshairs back on you, which was the time you needed to, um, you know, pick your fight or run away. Yeah, exactly. And, and like, there's another tactic, like just along those lines that I was using where I would slide around the corner. So I'd, I'd go slide out, engage my opponent. And if I know I'm going to lose that, that, that engagement, I'll just Icarus dash back out. Like, in in in, in a, like a in a second, right? Like I'm I'm out right away, you know. And mm-hmm. it's such a good tactic that nobody's using in the Crucible for over a year. I just don't I just don't know why, you know. <laughs> but now it's, everybody knows, people right? People don't read the perks. Maybe it's ease of use. I don't know. A lot of people tend to go towards the uh, easiest thing. Look, I did it one time. I float up in the air. I get shot out of the sky because I barely dodge, and I'm still an easy target. Yeah, I think there's a bit of a a skill gap there for that sort of that yeah. particular skill. I think it's also for some players impossible not to compare it to the old Twilight Garrison and used to have that almost that double dash in the air and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. it's a different feel and it, de- it definitely takes some adjusting to. Yeah. So looking at some of the other subclasses, I mean, uh, Brady loves Nova War, but do you think of the new subclasses, there are any real standouts or any that you you think have got some hidden depths you want to keep digging into? Um, honestly, okay, so here's what I've unlocked so far. I've done Nova Warp and I did a detailed guide on that. Um, I won't talk about that too much. I think everybody knows how good it is, but um, yeah. <laughs> I'll talk. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about sp- uh, spectral bra- uh, blades. And just through two or three days ago, I actually unlocked the new dawn blade as well, the one where uh, you have that healing rift and everything. So I was messing mm-hmm. around with it actually just before this podcast, and I found some interesting things I can talk about. You know, um, but spe- uh, spectral blades. The most interesting thing about it is. Uh, a lot of people are talking how it has really bad hit de- uh, hit detection when you, you're swiping your blades or whatever. And mm-hmm. I won't disagree with that, right? I, th- I think it's a little bit broken. Uh, what I found was if you're attacking your opponent while jumping, your hit registration is drastically improved. Um, so for anybody listening, uh-huh. just, just do that. Jump into the air, swipe, and most likely you're going to get your kill from that way, you know? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You try a lot of stuff. I don't think to try. Yeah. Well, it's really similar to the Sentinel, right? The Sentinel has that problem too, where you're hitting people from the ground. It just keeps on whiffing. But uh, yeah, so that that's one thing with the Spectral Blades. I think the other thing I can talk about was, um, is it's neutral game. Uh, the, well, like when you're in your neutral game, you constantly need to take advantage of, um, what's that perk called? True Sight. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Something like that? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, f- uh, that's flawless the, the perk is called fla- Flawless Execution. Yeah, exactly. uh, let me send you, shameless plug, a link <laughs> to the famous bird spreadsheet of all perk text, which I made after, uh, I got the idea for after talking with you the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Realizing there was no good place to Google actual perk test text, which I knew I wasn't reading carefully enough. So I'm just going to DM that to you right now. Awesome. You want it and uh, carry on. <laughs> nice. So... So flawless execution, that's the whole neutral game is built around that, uh, around that specific perk, right? If you're not using it, the neutral game, like it really has nothing in there, right? Uh, so most people complain that like when you're actually trying to get a kill while crouching, it's pretty hard because you're just sitting there like you're like a sitting duck, right? So you have to make it difficult for your opponent to actually hit you while you're crouching. So what you want to do is... Maybe slide into the engagement. So what what I found worked for me was using stompies. So slide into your engagement and then take your shots. That way, when you get your kill, you're um you're, you're gonna get it while you're crouching, right? But there's an aspect that a lot of people don't think about, and it's actually a tool that the Night Stalker has that I don't think anybody's using. 
Maybe I'll ask you guys, what do you think it is? I always get this part wrong. <laughs> um, is it a different jump? No, it's, it's a tool that they have. All night suckers have it. Hmm. Well, it's going to be the... It's going to be the smoke bomb, right? Right. It's the smoke. Exactly. Right. So a lot of people aren't using that, but the idea is when you're going to engage somebody, just throw the smoke at their feet. Right. And then they're going to get stuck in there. And at that point you can crouch and not worry as much um, that you're going to get killed. Right. Mm. Um, but that's why we have that exotic, that bungee. Uh, I think they, they changed it recently. It's called the Graviton Forfeit, I believe. It's the one with like the, the, the purple face. Um, mm. And they change it so that, when you proc flawless execution, your smoke charges faster. So it's like a rinse and repeat strategy. You throw your smoke, kill your opponent, proc flawless ex execution, and you'll get your smoke back for the next engagement mostly, right? So use that smoke so to that's, advantage. That's, so yeah, that, that's, that's the loop. I mean, that was something that I remember we talked about with uh, Claude Jerome, the subclass designer of Bungie. Um, talking about the top tree uh, arc strider path that sort of has that melee kill dodge, melee kill dodge loop there. Um, this one sort of, yeah, it, it seems like the, the same thing, right? Um, there's, there's a way to abuse it if you use it <laughs> the way it's meant to be used. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, it, it takes a little bit of scale to do, but honestly, once you, you perfect that, um, proccing flawless execution is so much easier, you know? Um, so, yeah, so that, that was one subclass. Uh, well, yeah. let, let me ask for that, for, um, for that subclass, do you think there's a particular loadout that like, if you're really going to commit to that sort of gameplay loop, do you think there's a particular loadout that pairs well with it? Yeah. Um, obviously your, your primary should be chaperone. Like everybody says, you slide in and then you have that <laughs> insane range with that shotgun. But um, your secondary, what I found works really, really well is a pulse rifle. Uh, and this, there's a specific reason for that. Like my initial thinking was to use a hand cannon uh, because it's a three tap. It's pretty easy to get the headshot. But the reason I switched to a pulse rifle is because there's three shots that come out per, per burst, right? So there's a higher probability for your your, your shot for it to actually land as a headshot. Whereas if you're using a hand, like a hand cannon, I mean, you're going to hit your shot, right? But if you miss it, then you're screwed, you know? That's why I like to use a pulse rifle. Ideally, like um, if it's in my energy slot, I've been using last perdition a lot and it, it's working so well, you know? Well, so is, is it the case that with a pulse rifle, if any round of the burst is a precision shot, it counts as a precision kill? Yeah. Well, it has to be, really? yeah, it's a precision, right? It's a precision bullet that has to kill him. And then it's going to... So, so, it's, it's, so it has to be the, the, last, the, the, the last shot that hits them has to be a precision shot. Or can it be any from that burst? It has to be the last one. So if, okay. the, if the killing blow is a body shot, then too bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, the, that, that is reassuring because if you told me that was not the case, I was going to lose my mind. <laughs> uh, but no, that, that does make a certain kind of sense, right? With the sort of natural kickback of it, that even if it's a bit of a panic shot, the, the odds are going to be better than spamming a hand cannon. Exactly. Um, you mentioned Last Perdition, and we are going to come back to that one because um, uh, I don't think many people are talking about Last Perdition right now. But uh, yeah, you were going to tell us about the, uh, what is it? The Way of Grace, the new uh, Dawn Blade mm -hmm. middle tree. Yeah, I need to hear this because I have <laughs> not been able to make that work in the Crucible and I like to consider myself a Warlock main. It's a little embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a couple hints on that. I've only been playing it for two, three days. I think uh, I most of, my, like most of my playtime was today, actually. Um, so remember in my last interview, I was talking to you guys about strategic thinking and really reading the perks and building your, your whole loadout around those perks. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did is I, I read into them and what I got from it was your grenade is so important and your melee is really good. So I came out with two loadouts, one that worked really well and then one that didn't work well. So first I'll talk about the one that didn't work well. Um, the one that didn't work well was basically, um, so, so, so the melee, whenever you kill a guy with your melee, you get empowered or something like that, right? Um, mm -hmm. your, your opponent burns, whatever, they die. Uh, and when you get the kill with that melee, you get empowered for about five seconds. And I think you get extra damage or something, right? So what I was doing in the beginning was I was getting those kills. 
Um, but what I realized was after I get those kills, I usually have no health left over, right? And so when I have all that extra damage that I can output and I try to go to my next uh, next, next opponent and engage them, um, I just died instantly because I had no health left, right? So my initial thought mm -hmm. process was Karnstein arm armlets, right? You kill a guy with mm -hmm. your melee, you get your health back and you can just, uh, you know, rinse and, re rinse and repeat, right? The thing is, it wasn't working as well as I intended. Um, uh, the reason being is that it only lasts for five seconds, that damage buff. So I'm like, I, I tried it for like, Five games. I'm like, screw this. It, it just wasn't working, you know. Um, but the, uh, just just yeah. a reminder for folks who did not immediately Google that, which I definitely didn't do because I just remember the perk text off the top of my head. Uh, Karnstein armlets um, have the perk Vampire's Caress. So when uh, you get a melee kill, that instantly is restoring a large chunk of health, and you continue to uh, restore health afterwards for a while. So I, this was one of those exotics in the the last exotic tuning path. Yeah, exactly. Didn't work though. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it didn't like there's another aspect to it why it didn't work. It's because it's a it's a like, a, like it's a really heavy shotgun meta right now. So um generally like melee engagements just don't come as often as you'd like, you know. As soon as you get close mm -hmm. to a guy, either you're trading or your shotgun kills somebody, you know. Uh, so that that melee engagement just never comes into play and like I I just wasn't using the current scenes as much as I wanted to, you know. Um, so that's why I switched out to the the one that was working. So I realized slowly that this is really a support class. You have to stay back um, and stay with your teammates, use your pulse rifle or your scout and just shoot uh, from a range. Because that, that aggressive gameplay that I was trying to do was just wasn't working, you know. So the build that I had created was um, I'd have a pulse rifle in my, my weapon slot and my exotic was um, the Verity's Brow. You guys know that one? No. Um, we definitely all <laughs> yeah. do, but you should just remind us what it does. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't think a lot of people know what this one does, right? But Verity's Brow, what it does is whenever you get a, uh, a kill with your energy weapon, it recharges your grenade. So the whole build that I was creating was making sure my grenade was up as often as possible. So I had like maybe two or three grenade mods. I had a pulse rifle in my energy slot and I had that exotic, right? So what I would oh, do yeah, is that one. Yeah. No, I remember it. <laughs> so what I was doing was I would actually um uh I would engage somebody, but before engage before engaging them, I would empower myself using my grenade. So I would get that overshield so that when I engage that hmm. that guardian, I always have up like an upper hand, right? Uh and then what I would do is I was I would obviously kill him with my pulse rifle and that would proc the exotic perk and I'd get my next grenade a lot quicker, you know? And I was just doing this constantly in the game, but you, you got to keep in mind, you have to play more of the range game with this class. Like, try, honestly, like I was trying to, trying to play aggressive in the beginning. It just wasn't working, you know? But mm. uh, yeah, that was kind of working. And, and the same thing with, for the Rift, like when you pop your super, um, when I tried to play aggressive with it and just get in their face, there's usually like either a Blade Barrage or an Arc Strider or, or some other super that just took me down right away. So I realized that I got to pop it a little bit further away and just keep the range game on, you know? And it was working, kind of. Well, <laughs> I wonder for this one, and um, I mean, you know, sort of by definition, this might not just, it might be decent, but but not a meta enough choice to take it in. But I wonder if this isn't, as far as the super goes, uh, something that would work better or work best in the comp playlist with sort of the reasoning being that your super there is going to be about winning around potentially, you know, if you're playing, playing countdown or playing survival versus just trying to rack up as many kills as possible or shut down another super. So, you know, you're, you're holding the countdown point or something mm -hmm. like that. I couldn't imagine, you know, playing clash and, um, trying to drop a well of radiance in a, in a convenient place. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that totally. And the other thing is that comp is 4v4, right? So it's a lot less chaotic. Uh, it's a lot easier for you to predict what kind of supers are going to come at you or uh, or even like shut down shotgun rushes or whatever it may be, right? It's The fact that it's less chaotic, I think the super can be a lot more beneficial. Yep. So I we, we did mention Nova Warp. Um, you did... Uh, actually quite a bit of testing early on on sort of just how much damage it does, which was helpful when um, I decided I was going to exclusively play this class going forward. Um, one question I am curious to know if you dug into is I did spend some time researching to a degree, sort of experimenting 
with what the best pairing is going to be for Nova Warp in PvP, um, with sort of my goal being focusing on a handheld Supernova build, the choices there being I have another world that are just going to give you sort of um, flat um, increase to uh, your ability rate for uh, all of your abilities versus Verity's Brow, which is specifically charging up your grenade versus um, Nezarek Sin, which is uh, going to, I believe, charge everything, but is is sort of keyed off of those void kills. Do you Is that something you've looked into, or do you have a preference there? Yeah, actually, I, I created a build. Um, I think if I were to choose something, it would just be between two exotics. First one would be um, Nezarek Sin, and the second one would be Transversive Steps. And Transversive is like, that, that's my go-to for everything. And it, the reason is because that reload mechanic that it has when you're sprinting is just so valuable, right? It's nice. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Um, like what you'll do is you'll you'll wipe a team or you'll kill a few guardians, and once you're done, you just move on to the next spawn point, and you don't have to waste time reloading your gun, right? You're gonna get to that next spawn point, get get the jump on them while your opponent's respawning, right? Um, but if I'm not using that, then I think Nezarek Sin would be my go-to, be, just just for the fact that you're gonna get all your abilities up faster. But honestly, I, I feel like I don't need it too much, you know? Because um, I think one of the perks that the, the Warlock has is whenever you get ability kills, it recharges your abilities slightly. Mm -hmm. Am I correct in, in saying that? Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's Dark Matter, uh, which is, uh, yeah, Void Ability Kills, Grant, Health, Melee, Grenade, and Class Ability Energy. Yeah, exactly. Everything. Yeah, so I was what I was doing was I was just running it with the Transversive Steps to get that extra mobility. Um, and I think the mods that I was putting on was just a couple of grenade mods, a couple of melee mods, not too many melee mods because like coming by melees is a little bit harder in this game now because of the shotguns, mm -hmm. but have those two grenade mods and like with that perk there that you have on the warlock, I think you'll have your grenade up at all times, you know? Yep. Yeah. And then maybe just put like three super mods on because a super is so freaking OP. <laughs> 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 yeah, it is. It is delightful. Sigh. <laughs> Um, all right, well, I would like to get a little bit deeper into weapons. I mean, we've got a larger pool to choose from than ever before. Um, but one thing I wanted to ask about is that I noticed there's a fair number of year one weapons that are still in the rotation for you. You mentioned Last Perdition. Yeah. Um, I feel like and, it, and, you know, like, it's, it's really easy to go back and get them now. Even yeah. if you deleted <laughs> all of them, you can just go in your collections and grab the one that uh, Special K dude is about to tell us about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which one is that? Yeah, so like I'll elaborate on Last Perdition first. Um, that Pulse Rifle is insane right now. And I think it's, in my opinion, even better than Bygones. The reason is because in year one, Rampage wasn't really good of a perk. Uh, and the reason is because like TTK was so high, right? Now that TTK has been shortened, when you proc Rampage... I believe the Pulse Rifle becomes a two, uh, two burst kill, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and so using that perk is so useful now. And what I love about that gun is that it has three different scopes, right? So it has that short zoom scope, which you can use on the short maps like Javelin. But if you're playing those long range maps, you can switch to the medium zoom one, which bygones can't do, right? Um, so that I, I like that versatility that the last perdition brings, you know? Um, huh. Yeah, it's, it's my go-to, yeah. honestly. I suspect yeah. um, th th this is this is a big statement. I suspect you might be the only person, at least that I know, who's going in match by match and switching up what scope they're using on their. <laughs> well, you have to, right? Like, there's that new. Um, is it called Eternity, or it's that map, the snowy map uh, there? Real long one, yeah. Yeah, like <laughs> forget using the short zoom, right? You need to use a long one, and when you do that, like your, your headshots are gonna glue, right? <laughs> so. Um, yeah, that, that pulse rifle is really good. I think the next one I'm going to talk about is a pulse that's going to throw everybody off. And the reason I'm calling this one out is because I was looking at the TTK charts that Mercules had made. And when you look at all the pulse rifles, uh, the lightweight ar uh, archetype has the most forgiving TTK out of all of them. Um, mm -hmm. It has a really good like optimal TTK. I think it was like 0.87 seconds or 0.83. I don't remember what it was. It was actually better than Last Perdition or Bygones. Um, but it's uh, the, the, the TTK for body shots. So I think it was only 1.33 seconds. It was better than everything, right? Um, and unfortunately, in Forsaken, there's only one gun with the lightweight archetype that launched. I think it was like uh, the raid one. I don't know what it's called. Um, 
So what I was using uh, in place of that, it was the pulse rifle called Agrona PR4. Do you guys know that one? <laughs> well, I did watch the video <laughs> earlier. <but. laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's surprisingly like honestly, it's so good, especially on like those medium to small maps. Um, the thing is, you got to spec it right. The the way that I'm specking it is I'm using the jolt sight, and it's really important. Your your perk needs to be steady rounds. Like in the beginning, mm-hmm. I think in year one, I was using the other perk. I think it was like armor piecing rounds to give it that maximum range. But when I switched it to steady rounds, this gun feels so good. Like it's one of those guns. It just feels like, like you know, when you're shooting your ace of spades and your opponent blows up. That's how that's how good it feels in your hand, you know. <laughs> so yeah, like I've been using it like crazy, and honestly, I love it. That raid one is uh, chattering bone, and, yeah. and I do like those archetypes. But it's hard when I only get one of those guns, and it's not a great roll. So it's nice to actually just pull something out that works right away yeah, in the meantime. Exactly. W- worth pointing out also that in the energy pulse slot, there is exactly one weapon with uh, a higher aim assist stat than Agrona, but Agrona is um, pretty solidly up there uh, in the number two slot. And, oh, uh, wow. So at least. More aim at every range. So that's something I didn't know actually. So that. That's probably why the gun did feels I, so good. Did I actually dig slightly <laughs> deeper into the stats than you? I'm going to call my mom right after the show. But just just curious, what is the aim assist on that gun? Uh, so the Agrona is coming in at 73 on the aim assist stat. Um, uh, sh- sorry, not not number one. Um, within the archetype... Let me see. Uh, Within the archetype, it may be. So Claws of the Wolf is going to come in at 78, but that is um, that is the, the rapid fastest fire. firing, yeah. the rapid fire, um, and uh, Horror's Least as well. Um, but, you know, that's that's a whole whole other thing right there. Yeah, interesting. Um, so that's probably why the gun feels so good. I, I actually, now I know why, right? So, and, and, and just, yeah. as for the people who are playing on PC, I know that, we we don't need stability because recoil is not a big deal. But I, I'm using mouse and keyboard, and I, honestly, I feel a huge difference putting steady rounds instead of the armor uh, the armor piecing rounds on this gun. It feels amazing. I guess sort of along those lines, and we're gonna we're gonna get to the rolls in a second. Like don't don't think that's 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 all I want to talk about. But there's I think two other categories of uh, old stuff I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. The first is. What exotics, I mean, you've mentioned Chaperone already, but if there's any others from your one that you think sort of have uh, have carved out a new place in this meta. Uh, and I also want to hear your thoughts on blue weapons. I mean, right now there's a couple super popular ones. Thank you, Mr. Fallout, for um, letting everyone know about Botheration. Thanks for that. But I imagine there's there's one or two others that you're, uh, you've, uh, you've done some research into. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the exotic, I would give it to Sunshot. It's so good. Um, <laughs> honestly, like a lot of people are sleeping on this gun right now. That archetype has, I think, a 0.8 second TTK. So it's the fastest amongst all hand cannons, aside from uh, the Luna's Howl, right? Um, the good thing about it, though, is, is its range is insane. And it has explosive rounds. So when you're getting hit by it, it feels like you're flinching like crazy. So uh, once you learn the recoil pattern, pattern on that gun, it's freaking amazing. And especially if I pair it with my Dawnblade, um, I think the inner accuracy on that gun is really good as well just because of those explosive rounds. Um, the, 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 biggest downfa- well, the, the, the biggest downside to Sunshot is actually the, it's a small mag size, right? It's only eight bullets. Um, so the way I counter it is I put on those transversive steps. Yep. So like, if my opponent runs away, like, screw you. I'm going to sprint at you, get my bullets back, and I'm going to get you, you know? And, like, just pair those together. And the the, the sunshot and the transversive steps, pair it, and you're going to feel amazing. W- worth pointing out, um, something you you talked about on uh, your, your first interview was um, part of the reason, if you're playing Dawnblade, this top tree Dawnblade, that that in-air accuracy is so important. Mm-hmm. One, it's really nice to have on a hand cannon, but also airborne kills with that top tree are going to... Uh, recharge your grenade and your melee. Exactly. Which yeah. sure is nice. I oh, feel yeah. like part of it getting overlooked was the bug at the beginning of Forsaken where it was, like, I think it was explosive rounds had the bug that it wasn't doing as much damage or something. Yeah, exactly. So like mm-hmm. people yeah. just set it aside and said, not for me. And they moved along and then Ace of Spades happened. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's easy for the community to kind of just get wrapped up 
in a thing and forget about yeah. <laughs> other options. It's a three tap now. It works perfectly fine. And uh, I was testing its range. I think it loses its three tap capability at around 33 meters, 33 or 34, something like that. So that's pretty good for uh, that uh, 150 RPM archetype. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's going to be fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I hope everyone uh, picked up the masterwork for it while they had the chance because that, that sure doesn't hurt. <coughs> I'm actually <laughs> chipping away on my uh, my hand cannon kills for uh, for my Lunas. So um, and uh, yeah, having pretty middling luck with uh, Ace of Spades. It's a it's a great gun, but it's just it doesn't feel quite right on controller for me yet. I'm willing to chalk that up to my error. But if there's some easy mode I can get from the explosive rounds on it, I'm gonna. Well, I'd recommend you honestly put um, on your helmet. There, there's uh, the perk that you can get. I think it's precision targeting uh, enhancement or whatever, so that all your precision mm. weapons they feel better. Like I, I, he, I notice a huge difference when I use that perk versus without it. Like the the magnetism, the aim assist, everything bumps up a little bit, and I feel the difference. Oh, we gotta talk about that too. Yeah. Okay, okay, no, we're, we're we're staying on track. We're staying on track. <laughs> Any other exotics you want to call out, or should we talk about blue weapons? Nothing crazy. I mean, I, I'm using Warcliff coil, coil a lot. Uh, sorry, Warcliff coil a lot. Um, other than that, I think every every other exotics pretty much same as usual. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's talk about the let's talk about the blue guns. Mm -hmm. uh, any any blues that people are sleeping on? Tell me what to pull out of my collection. Blues. Um, yeah, azimuth. That's pretty <laughs> good. But uh, if you're going to use azimuth, you have to. Uh, Pair it with your warlock and put on the uh, Ophidian aspects because that freaking gun is so slow. <laughs> yeah, that's a slow <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, but I, I think yep. that's really the only one that I got to mess around with a little bit. Um, shotguns, I know. Um, I think Fallout made a video on botheration or something, and that, that's really good. Uh, I, maybe I, I can just add a little point to that. A lot of people haven't tested this, but I actually did this before Forsaken launched. Um, there was a shotgun that nobody was using and it was called Motion to Vacate. It was one of the trial shotguns that came out like towards the end. You guys know which one I'm talking about? Yeah, the season yeah. three one, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, it had like this god roll, but it was in the lightweight archetype. So I don't, I don't know if uh, people paid attention to it, but it has a perk called Opening Shot. And what Opening Shot does, and I tested this actually, it gives you the same pellet spread that Smoothbore does. It's called smoothbore, right? That's that's the one that compresses uh, your pellet spread, or it's a uh, full yeah, choke. full choke, yeah, full yeah, choke. exactly. So it gives you the same pellet spread. The thing is, you will not lose your precision damage. So if you're if you're going for a shotgun, try to get opening shot. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, but the, the, huh. yeah, just just okay. uh, just to clarify, I did this testing before Forsaken. I don't know if anything changed. I doubt they would change it, but I think they kept it the same. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah, I, I certainly these these lightweight archetype shotguns have uh, have found a new life. Oh yeah. So, uh, whew. I Bonesy, I don't know. Are, are are you doing the same thing I am and trying to think about what we're gonna call this episode? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, sometimes I hit a topic or a, a a title right away, and sometimes I think of it at Sunday at midnight. So uh, <laughs> we're leaning towards Sunday right now because there's yeah, a lot a lot we've covered. Well, there's there's like a there's a pun to be made about like what do you call like a doctor who does sleep studies because we've all been sleeping and um, uh, Kay has been watching us and is going to try and snap us out of our boring loadout terrors. <laughs> we're, we're workshopping it. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> um, all right, I wanna I wanna hear your thoughts on roles because uh, there are. I don't think we are quite at that consensus point of what exactly constitutes a god role for you know each of the sort of different weapon scenarios um, as we had sort of figured out uh, by the end of Destiny 1. Um, and I want to start with grenade launchers because this is something where, you know, in the first year it was play of the game because it had the, the those proximity rounds on it. Um, or if you wanted to be saucy, you could run aura wings. Mm -hmm. um, and now we've got lots of grenade launchers that can all potentially roll uh, those proximity rounds. So I guess I'm curious, um, you know, if you if you had the the choice of a dream roll, 
Uh, what, first, what would that role be? But then also given a choice between different grenade launchers you could roll it on uh, sort of in that power slot. Um, is there any one that you like and why? Yeah, so um, I have Edge Transit. I consider it a god rule myself. And the reason is because it's actually good for PvP and PvE. Um, so the role that I got has Volatile Launch, which is a, the scope that you want. I think it bumps up the blast radius to the max, I believe. I think Fallout was saying that. So I, I know I have the good one, that means. Um, I have <laughs> uh, on it, I believe, Snapshot and Rampage. So he said Rampage doesn't work in PvP, but it does work in PvE. So this grenade hmm. launcher is going to be versatile for me, right? It, well, it does work in PvE, right? I, am I correct? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I know he said it yeah, doesn't work it, in it PvP. Sort of, <laughs> it activates, obviously. You know, you get a kill and you'll get that zing sound uh, and your gun's highlighted. But yeah, I think like just because of the nature of it, if it's going to explode close enough, it's going to explode close enough. Yeah. And I haven't really noticed I'm getting any sort of like, you know, really wide shots where I'm barely hitting their foot and it still kills them or something like that. So I think it's just kind of tough. It's like marginal what kind of damage it's doing. Yeah. So, okay. So let's let's pretend Rampage is proccing in PvE. So that's good, like from the get-go. And my perks, I have proximity grenades. So that's going to be good for PvP. But my bottom perk is actually spike grenades. So when I'm playing PvE, I would switch over to that. And just just like whip it at, the, at whatever boss I see, you know, because spike grenades is mm-hmm. bonus damage mm-hmm. on direct hits, right? So like the role that I have, it's good for both worlds. Um, aside from that, I don't think grenade launchers are more complicated, but there is one that I got. Um, it's the Vanguard one. Uh, uh, sorry, man, I forgot the name. Um, it, it's like an aggressive fame uh, grenade launcher. And it actually uh, outrageous fortune. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, you probably have like a sheet in front of you with all the names, don't you? <laughs> I just have um, it on my hunter, and I'm okay. looking at them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a- anytime um, I'm doing an interview, and Andrew, leave this in because this is the way to do it. Um, I always have three things open. I always have my spreadsheet, so I've got all the perk titles there. Uh, I always have dim open, so I can check the rolls on all my guns. Uh, and then Swain turned me on this one, uh, DestinySets.com. Mm-hmm. Just Every gun organized by where you get it from, every piece of armor, every uh, you know, every other little emblem and chip and doodad, and whether or not you have it, it's uh, super handy. Awesome. Um, so there you go. Okay, what do you like about this this uh, grenade launcher? So I got lucky, and I got one with the perk concussion grenades on it, which I've never seen before on this type of archetype. Hmm. Have you seen it before? I have not got that to drop, yeah. but that's that's usually coming on the um, what's it called the the single shot, yeah, primarily. Interesting. Yeah, okay. exactly. So it, I got it on this one. So the advantage is I don't have to wait for the the grenade to like bounce or whatever. I'll throw it at the ground, and the guy's gonna be stunned. Finish it up, finish him up with my primary, and do that with everybody else, right? So it changes it up a little bit, um, and the fact that it's aggressive frame, it's gonna flinch him more as well. So I get the concussion and I get to flinch my opponent, you know? <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it for the grenade launchers. Well, I'm wondering there, I mean, are you specifically going to use, um, I'm guessing like a hand cannon with something to boost ready speed on it. So you're ready to do that quick swap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I usually have sunshot out or maybe an SMG depending on like if I'm playing my Dawn blade. So yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. I'm I, I'm getting better at this game. I'm, I don't think I keep up yet, but I can uh, <laughs> I get one every now and then. Um, okay, uh, let's uh, let's keep going. Um, we talked about SMGs a little bit earlier, um, but now we have the ability for random rolls on them, and I think SMGs are interesting because what makes for a good SMG has changed pretty significantly <laughs> with the change to Forsaken and sort of like what, what what you talk about, you know, sort of a shotgun meta. Um, so on your SMGs, what are you going to be looking for in a roll? Um, I want something that can keep my shot steady and get headshots. Because uh, the reason is because there's a lot of shotguns out there right now. Uh, and you need to have something that's going to optimally kill them as fast as possible, right? So I have trackless waste right now. It's uh, the new like Forsaken one. On that one, I have ricochet rounds. Um, I think I have under pressure. And I think the the other one is tap the trigger. So like really I have the most stable <laughs> SMG that you can get for for that archetype, you know? Like that's what I would go I feel for. like I've had 
I've had a lot of SMGs drop with that particular combination of under pressure and tap the trigger, which is interesting, right? Because you get that initial boost from tap the trigger, which I find to be fairly noticeable. Um, and then under pressure kicking in, you know, if you're just going to yeah, unload it and, and hope for the kill. Mm-hmm. And then there's also the, the new Crucible one. It's called Hard Truths. Um, that one's good. It's just, I don't know how it works on, on controller though. I, I know a lot of people said because it has like a stability rating of like 10. <laughs> <laughs> the bar is like, I don't even know. It's like, it's pretty small, the stability bar, right? Um, it works okay with a mouse, but I've heard a lot of people say it's pretty hard to use with a controller. But uh, uh, for that one, like you just want to max out that range and it's going to be very similar to your Icolos SMG. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, you got me Googling all these. All these rocket launchers and outrageous fortune can roll concussion grenades, but play of the game can. Okay. Ah. Okay. Stay, stay focused. <laughs> stay on it. Stay on it. Okay. Uh, hand cannons. Um, and, and this one I think is, is particularly interesting because we've had some very distinctive new hand cannon choices mm-hmm. show up. Same question. Uh, what guns are you liking and what perks uh, are you going to be looking for on them? Um, so, Pre Forsaken, I had one SM, sorry, one hand cannon that I was using like religiously. It was Judgment. What I loved about it was it has a great sight, it had moving target and opening shot. Um, yeah. And I've got so many kills on my Judgment, yeah. and I, I I needed permission to like it, uh, which I got from your video. I'm basically <laughs> stealing all of your tricks, nice. and they work great. <laughs> Y'all are dummies for not doing it. Yeah. Um, okay. But f- f- for people who aren't like using moving target, use it. It's an amazing perk. It's going to make your reticle stick. It's going to create the, uh, like a bigger magnetism. Like I feel it when I'm using that perk, um, my shots are landing a lot easier. Uh, and for me, anything that'll make my shots land easier because my aim is horrible most of the time or some of the time, um, I-, I-, I like to have that perk. So I got a roll that just dropped them, <laughs> dropped from the heavens on day one. It was a better devils with, True sight, uh, moving target, accurate rounds, and opening shot. So everything that's going to boost my accuracy was there. (laughs) So like I'm just using that all the time, getting headshots easily as long as my aim is on point, you know? Um, But yeah. Yeah. I think there's one other piece of moving target that I've come to appreciate is that if you are going to be dueling or peak shotting with a hand cannon, um, you're going to be relying on your strafe to make you hard to hit mm-hmm. um, or to duck back into cover. If you have inspect for mobility, you can pick a little bit of that back up yep. with moving target that's going to increase your movement speed when you're ADS. That's the whole point, right? Uh, so you can keep your mobility like a little bit low. Like I'm at around four or five right now. I just have that perk and I feel like as zippy as I was if I was like seven or eight or whatever, you know? Yep. Yeah. Um, well, let's let's just real quick, let's talk about that. Um with sort of the change in time to kill, do you feel like sort of the the optimal balance between mobility, resilience, recovery has shifted across the board or how are you going to sort of tune those? Mm, depends on my class. Um, I, I like mobility, but I feel like resilience is really important. There's just something to me when, when I'm playing low resilience, I feel like I'm dying a lot more. Maybe it's my play style, but when I'm playing on like one or two resilience, I feel like I'm dying a lot more than I'm than I, like than I am compared to maybe five, six, or seven resilience. You know, so mm-hmm. if I'm running my warlock, I'm usually running like a I don't know four, five, four stat spread. Um, mm-hmm. If I'm on my hunter, maybe six mobility and 10, 10, 10 resilience. Which I know a lot of people are <laughs> wondering why you're on ten <laughs> resilience. You know, but uh, you see a lot of people don't think about resilience. Uh, from a different perspective, if if you understand, most people think about resilience just by comparing it to the TTK charts, right? Uh, they'll, like, they'll look at the charts that Mercury's made, right? And they're like, as long as my resilience is high enough to, you know, counter this, then I'm good, right? But there's also, that. how do I say this? Those charts are made uh, assuming that your opponent is at optimal range, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and he's doing full damage. But in many engagements they might be a little bit further out, right? So when they're a bit further out, they're doing a bit less, lam- like a little bit less damage. And that extra resilience that you're going to have is going to let you survive that, right? So that's my thought process behind it, you know? And there's also other factors, right? There's like grenades, there's burn damage. So just having that extra 10 points of resilience, it can add up over the long term, you know? 
Um, that does that mean that your recovery is at zero? Uh, if I'm playing hunter, usually I'm playing on one, but the other classes is usually about four. Uh, how are you making up for that? And and this was something you talked about with one of your Archstrider builds last time. But if that's sort of your loadout in general, are you just are you just at low health a lot larger percentage of the time than you'd otherwise be? Uh, yeah. Like I, I haven't played my hunter in a while, but um. I adapt to it, right? Like in the beginning, it's hard, but you learn to, you know, disengage, take a step back, just wait a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, if I'm if I'm doing playing with my hunter, I'll be out of my engagement for a little bit longer, you know. But if I'm playing my warlock or my titan, then I'll be back in the game, you know, like right away. So <laughs> you just have to adapt. It it takes time. Like it takes a few games to to get used to it, you know. All right, birds, you got all your new loadout. I, ideas written down yeah I, uh, stuff I, around say, dim. <laughs> I um i'm glad that we're doing this uh a fair bit earlier in the season than last time uh, i <laughs> right hope folks can can benefit from this um before uh for the next release the next uh whatever's coming with next season comes along sweet um but yeah i've got a big list of things i'm going to talk about over the coming weeks and slowly forget <laughs> that i got from you until the next time you come on the show uh yes all done thank you <laughs> well uh mr k before we let you go and just so we talk about you know some other than loadouts how are you enjoying the playlist options we have right now have you done that comp grind or anything like that yeah honestly i've i started off playing mostly quick play uh, i'm starting mm-hmm. to move on to comp i think i got up to about 1500 um in my honest opinion i like the comp playlist a lot more uh, and just this is just my preference you know i know mm-hmm. a lot of people like the 6v6 style i personally think it's a little bit too chaotic right now um <laughs> especially with yeah. all the one hit kill abilities and everything and it, it's fine if you're going in just to fool around but i, I do like that tactical game mode where you can be a bit more strategic, you know, and I really, really wish Bungie comes out with a 4v4, 4v4 quick play playlist so that, you know, we can have those players who are a bit more tactical and enjoy that, you know, but uh, if I'm not going to play quick play, then yeah, I think I'm going to move on to comp now and just enjoy that a little bit more, you know, sure. and get that yeah. loose out. Yeah. Kind of a nice middle ground too now with yeah. uh, Clash and Control added in. So yeah, exactly. Get that, get that variant style Yeah, right on. Uh, have you done much Rumble at all in, uh, in Forsaken so far? <laughs> yeah, I have, but <laughs> I have my opinions on Rumble. <laughs> I think that they need to change just it a little bit. But yeah, I I, I think um, just a couple of days ago, I uploaded like two videos on Rumble. And mm-hmm. like I was just totally shredding my opponents. All I needed to do was pick up heavy ammo every single time. And like, I think I was, give, I, I was finishing Rumble matches in like four minutes, you know? And um yeah, something needs to change there. I don't know what Bungie can do, but um, uh, other than that, like Rumble was always my favorite playlist back in D1 or even in Halo. It's always been my my, my place to fi- like fine tune my my skills and everything and just show off my skills at the same time, you know? But I feel like right mm-hmm. now it's not really a skillful playlist. I think it's more like who grabs the power ammo the fastest and just abuses it the <laughs> most, you know? But uh, yeah. Well, you got those concussion grenades now yeah. and it's this whole problem. <laughs> yeah, I'll start trolling with that, right? <laughs> I still I still can't imagine having a having a magazine loaded grenade launcher with concussion rounds. That is <laughs> that is ridiculous. I was actually gonna dismantle that actually. I and then I saw concussion grenades. I'm like, oh that's my baby from like year one. <laughs> Let me mess around <laughs> with this, you know? It's it's actually pretty good. It has like a really low blast radius, but it, it works, you know. Yeah. Um, well, I guess, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're winding down. Um, I mean, and all things being said, there's still so much stuff to explore. There's going to be a lot of stuff that's just waiting on, you know, us getting the, the right role to really try out an idea that we might have, um, kind of looking ahead over the coming weeks, um, in terms of weapons, perks, subclasses, kind of anything that Forsaken has to offer. Um, what are you interested in? Sort of where, where do you see yourself turning your attention to next? I think for the foreseeable future, I'm going to be grinding comp a lot. I want to get the get to legend. I want to get the not forgotten. That's going to be my focus. But in terms of weapons, uh, I think Thunderlord is going to be coming out soon, right? I can't wait to get my hands on that. I freaking love that gun back in D1. Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> yeah, so I, <laughs> if they launch it soon, I can't wait to get my hands on that. Um, and then the, there's the update coming in December, right? With the Black Armory. Like, that's going to be epic, I think. Mm-hmm. Can't wait for that. 
Is there a uh, is there a subclass you just, you haven't even touched yet that you have your eye on? Mm, okay, so uh, I got on the Arc Strider for a bit. I have to say that that subclass is ass. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. Um, I tried like for two weeks to try like just to make that subclass work. It just I don't know, man. In, in like in a meta with like all these one hit kill kill abilities, I'm there trying to use floor lightning, you know. To do one thirty damage, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it just wasn't working, yeah. you know. So I, I dropped that, but um, I think I'm going to move on to Titans next. I, I really wanted to mess around with the new Sunbreaker. I, I think there's a lot of stuff to explore there. People haven't found out exactly how to use it, you know. I, I know yeah, back in did some pretty it's cool got a stuff. Place. You know, but it's just it is not a gap closer. I'll say that much. Yeah, <laughs> I think um, I think on that new Sunbreaker. Occasionally, I'll run into someone in PvP running it who knows what they're doing. And the reason it is so effective um, is because they really understand that heavy attack in super. They know what they can go through. They know how to aim it. They know how far it's going to reach. Um, and watching people you know, put up two, three, four kills from a distance, even potentially behind cover, um, I think that one's going to be the 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 sort of mastery of that will will sort of set apart the high skill players there. Mm-hmm. Uh, throwing hammers cool, yeah. but I think that super is is what's going to take the work. Mm-hmm. I think so too. Yeah, but uh, yeah, <clears throat> I, I actually I'm going to start working on my next like video montage, like the ones that I made in the past. But I'm trying to figure out like what style to make it. You know, um, I don't know if I'm going to do it on one subclass. Maybe I'll do like a mashup or something. But that's to be determined. You know. I, I've enjoyed that you've just been posting gameplay because there's just a lot more to draw inspiration from. But uh, I really do like those. Yeah, they're they're sort of montages. They're sort of tutorials. They're kind of just graphic design projects <laughs> on their own. They're just pretty. Uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. So yeah, looking forward to the next. What one. did you guys think of the uh, Sunbreaker one? It was good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, it it, it uh, rang true with me. That's yeah. For sure. yeah. <laughs> I get nervous when I watch that video sometimes, man, because I went through a <laughs> lot going through that meta with all the Arc Striders using that Sunbreaker oh, when it was just as weak as it could be, right? But uh, man, when I watch that video, I still get nostalgia like, fuck, man, it, it's, it looks really good, you know? I was actually shocked that I made something like that, you know? So, like, if anybody's listening, like, just go check that one out. Like, I put a lot of work into that. I, I think that's the best one that I've made so far, you know? Well, it, speaking of, where could someone find you on the internet, whether it's YouTube, Twitter, all that? Uh, yep, so I'm on YouTube. Uh, I, I upload videos as often as I can. It's uh, This channel is called Special K Dude. And the other place I'm on is on Twitter. And same thing, Special K Dude, one word. You can find me there. I'll tweet occasionally. Yeah, you're saying you put out uh, just a few videos, but you've put out so much right, late, lately, so... Please check it out. There's he's got a lot of visual aids to what he talked about here on the show. Yeah. Uh, on your Twitter, are you going to be linking to uh, the work you do on the playbook? Yeah, I could. I, I usually don't, sh- but yeah, I can. Like, you mean my Reddit posts? Yeah, you should do that. Uh, there, there, there's, there's, I think um, a, a kind of back and forth and sort of a deeper dive that is a good fit for the playbook, but. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't always get just uh, yeah from from watching a video, so yeah. check those out too. For sure. Well, especially K, dude. Thank you so much for coming on once again. Yeah. Yeah, man. And guys, uh, go try out that Agrona PR4. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> Pulling it from you twisted my arm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's special, K. I. I I don't know if it's obvious that Special K is just like one of my favorite guests. I just kind of let time. birds talk during that <laughs> it, one. Dude. You, you wind them I'm up. I'm on the same wavelength. You got to let them. Dude. Got to let them run it out. I uh, I like the theory crafting. I like trying it out. He's and, also a uh, Special K fan, bro. Uh, I, you know, I like what you like. <laughs> um, thank you for listening to the show. This uh, extremely spooky and... Uh, incredibly real talk up front episode of crucible radio but you know we keep it real here uh if you want to keep on riding this crazy crucible radio train 
follow us on Twitter at Crucible Radio. Go to our website, crucibleradio.com. Or if you say, look, that's great, but I need more. I need more Crucible Boys talking. <laughs> guess what? You can go to patreon.com slash Crucible Radio. We record a bonus pod every month. Just a little bit of support that pays for this show makes a... Uh, Makes it possible for Engineer Andrew to yeah. work his fucking magic all over the show. You like us talking about real stuff. We do that a lot. On that one. Yeah, uh, everything but destiny. Uh, turns out we got a lot to talk about. So you go check it out. And uh, boys, I think now it is time for a snippet of the intro yes, that well, didn't travel work. Guide. <laughs> <laughs> My, Spooky uh, travel guide. <laughs> Yes, a uh, rambling, not thought out travel guide. Thanks for listening. So nice. Bye. Goodbye. Uh, guys, you'll never guess where I was last night. What? Huh? Where? <laughs> huh? Tell me. Um, have you ever heard of a little city called New Orleans? I uh, know. What's that? <laughs> uh, you might know it. I believe the locals call it Nerlands. I'm like 90% certain. I think it's more of a Nerlands. Oh, that's right. That's right. Narlins. Uh, I was in Narlins last night um, at a little place called the Superdome. Uh, which is where a little team called the Saints played. And I was on the field uh, and I was listening to that song. Dun, 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 um, <laughs> I feel like that's the and, appropriate uh, place to listen to that. <laughs> that's the best. There's, there's no better spot. Uh, me and like 40,000 other dorks were dancing to that song uh, with uh, lemonades in both of our hands. Yeah, anyways... I guess that's the whole story. Oh, cool. Weird story. <laughs> New Orleans is a great city. I highly recommend it, but y'all got to figure out the whole weather thing there. It's like a soup out there. Or a gumbo, as the locals uh, call it. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's get to the show. Let's get to the show. Here we go. Hey, guys, what rhymes with recording? Decording. No. Uh, snowboarding. Uh, hey, guys. You want to hear a joke? It, yeah. Do you want to hear two jokes and a longer joke? I, I don't know if Bonesy is on board for this uh, tangent, but I'm 100% with you. Yes, please. Joke, joke, joke. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, two, That's solid. Two jokes and a long joke. <laughs> That's solid. Uh, I don't know, Bonesy. What rhymes with recording? No, I really need, like, if I can get a word that oh. rhymes with recording, <laughs> I will do the part, but I need literally just, like, a rhyme with recording. Um, Your plane is now boarding. <laughs> <laughs> chatting on, chatting with discording. What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-host Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com slash crucible radio and join the squad. See you there.